Okay, hey everybody. I know it's been a, almost a year since I actually up actually put a video up here on YouTube. Still out here, homeless people. Um, I've still got the trailer all converted over into a little bedroom slash storage area. Been having to move around a lot. Uh, we have a city ordinance that makes us move around every like five days or so, but. Luckily, since I keep my whole area really nice, tidy, and clean, and I try not to be a burden to anybody, I try not to, um, uh, 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 you know, so sometimes I can stay in a, in, a, in a single spot for up to a month to two months, whatever. The shelter has been open for a whole year now, well, coming up on a year. Um, not the Pavarello, but the actual warming center, you know, where you've seen all my other videos, you know, my live streams and stuff. And man, you guys, I've been doing so much out here. I've been kind of an advocate for the homeless out here. I went up to Helena and spoke at the uh, Policy and Leadership Institute, uh, did some public speaking up there and um, spoke in front of, uh, well, there's there were some legislators and there's, uh, you know, kind of spoke on behalf of the homeless here in Missoula. And then I got back here and this is months ago. But I got back here and ended up getting uh, invited to a um, a uh, urban camping um, think tank kind of for the mayor's office here in town. It's kind of weird because <laughs> when I was living the other life, you know, building the go karts and all that kind of stuff, I never met anybody important. But now I've been now that I've been out here. Geez, I meet with the mayor like every month. You know, it's weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> meet with the uh, uh, city council and stuff like that. They're all, they're all, they're all seem to be pretty nice people and stuff. They're just they got their hands tied by the insurance companies and the lawyers and crap. But um, went and did that, and and uh, we had five meetings for that type of thing. Got invited to do that, and they they wanted two people from the homeless community. Um, out of well about like 850 people well they the numbers depending upon who you turn to the numbers here in Missoula uh, kind of fluctuate but I know there's over a thousand people in Missoula alone that are homeless and that's not just talking about people in their tents that's talking about people out here who are sleeping in their cars RVs have little makeshift places like what I've got here you know I got my little bedroom back there you know my trailer is my like bedroom I prefer to like kind of I used to like sleeping in the in the uh, in the shelter, but now I like I, I just kind of like being in this thing. I, I don't know why. I've just been I'm starting to get I'm I'm way acclimated into the uh, homeless thing now. Um, I have no willpower, no motivation to get an apartment or hook up with anybody. I mean, the only way. Well, I don't know. It's the only way that's gonna because because you know you guys, I'm not one to get government assistance. So I'm, I don't get food stamps. I'm not on housing. I don't do any of that kind of crap. Um, I, I'm not a welfare case. So um, I don't get any assistance and I don't apply for any assistance. So um, I try to stand my own ground. I've still been working for the same guy. I'm still working for the same guy. I've been with him for five years now, coming up on five years. Uh, doing handyman stuff, working, stuff like that. And you see I've gotten, I'm building up my all my tools and stuff like that pretty much. Now most of the stuff that I got is more for wood and you know home maintenance crap you know and i don't have anything specialized for steel or any of that so all that stuff is pretty much gone crystal got rid of all that my whole shop and everything at the at the house is gone all the builds are gone except for the motorcycle i still have the motorcycle the the trail bike i still have that but that's stashed over at somebody else's place because last year i was driving it around i wrecked it and um I broke some welds, so I just haven't had a chance to get out there and tear it all apart and um, wire wheel the paint off and then re-weld it. You know, I just, I don't know, I, I, it's too its too time consuming just living this way. You know, you don't, you know, when I get off of work, you know, I'm so tired and exhausted, you know, it's like you really don't want to do anything else. You know, you, you try, you try to, but you just don't, you know, you're just too damn tired. And, 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 uh, and you, you know, you don't get really a chance to relax unless I come here and I lay down and I sleep, 
you know, but I really can't do that because this damn thing, you let me back, let me, some of you guys have seen this in my other videos, but yeah, that's my little trailer. That's my trailer that I converted. Remember when I built that on, on those in the build logs for my go-kart channel? Yeah, that's the trailer that the Batmobile used to be on and the full screen machine. Yeah, I converted that into a big bedroom kind of type of thing. And I got my got my truck still, and I also got this thing here. Some of you guys didn't know that, but yeah, that's that's a 1991 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser. That's what that thing is. So that's my car, and I got a truck, and I got this trailer. So you know, I'm trying, I'm building my life up, even though I'm homeless here. You know, I'm not some, I'm not going out and just wasting time and blowing money on stupid shit. You know, I'm investing and trying to put money aside and trying to build my life up as much as I possibly can. I got to move this thing closer. And um, I got my own, uh, I got one of these things. <laughs> one of the people, I don't know where they got this, but you know, it's one of those cigarette things, you know? So when I'm out here smoking cigarettes, I know where I can put my cigarette butts. And then I got my own trash, my own garbage. And I just got done sweeping up this whole area move this over here like this and you see i got my little lattice and you know i'm sitting on my porch you know <laughs> i know it's kind of cheesy but hey it's cute and it's comfortable and you know i'm cozy so yeah but um yeah this life is taking a big toll on me i'm getting sick i had real bad sciatic problems in the past two years um my legs get really weak they give out on me uh i cough a lot now um Especially when we get fire, when fire season comes in. Yeah, when fire season comes in, it is just, yeah, I sleep in this thing. And sometimes I try to stay in the shelter, you know, in the warming center on Johnson and North. And oh, it looks like we got some, uh, some other people coming along. But they'll probably stop and chit chat with me. I don't know if this guy was here. You might have heard me slamming his Nope, I wasn't. I just got here last night. <laughs> I, was running, 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 and I slid into that canal, bro, up to here, dog. No way, in the water? Hi. Yeah, into the water. I didn't think there was water in there. Hey, oh, dog. no shit. I'm, I'm totally. Lane. Totally. Lane. Right. <laughs> I like it. That's cool. Sick. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing, a, I'm doing a live stream, too. So. My name is <laughs> number four. Number four? Yes. All right, cool. Are you four? All right, yep. You guys take it easy. Those are some people, they, they, they're they not down at the shelter. They're probably living in an apartment somewhere around here or something, but yeah. And so, um, kind of, kind of working on the advocacy thing, you know, for the homeless out here. And, um, I don't know where they're getting their numbers, but you know, one, one situation says we got about 350 homeless people out here. Another one will say we got about 850, but I can tell you it's over a thousand. And that's not just counting people in tents. That's people in RVs and all this all the same type of situation I'm in. You know, they'll they'll have uh, an out at the airport, you know, which is the west, northwest section of town. That whole area is, you know, there's RVs, all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever done any searching on what's going on up in like Seattle and Los Angeles and all sorts of crap. But. The homeless community is, 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 is growing everywhere because of the economy. Everything's just getting too damn expensive for people to live. And um, some of my older YouTube videos you guys will relate to on my live streams where I, where I was at that camp. Well, they ultimately shut that camp down. They shut that camp down and then uh, they, were, they, they were hearing all sorts of stupid crap about how there was like sex trafficking going on there. And there was there was a uh, 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 human trafficking, and it, it was just it was some of the stuff was just irately just stupid because I was out there and none of that crazy happened, and so <laughs> it's it it was uh, it's just there's these people are hearing this stupid that's coming from that the homeless people are doing that is not happening and they're believing it these these gullible naive dumbass people who are living in these co cushy little houses and these apartments and crap they're hearing this stupid coming in from like security guards and all this other kind of crap that that what the heck oh 
oh, oh, my lights are getting ready to turn on. See that blinking right there? Those lights are those Harbor Freight lights that have a little solar charger. So as the sun charges up those lights, now the sun is getting ready to go down and these lights start blinking. So that's, what, that's, how, that's what's going on there. So anyways, um, yeah, they ended up, uh, the stink tank that I was part of was supposed to come up with solutions for the homeless, but it pretty much didn't. We went to these five meetings that were supposed to come up with ideas to help um, help out the homeless and all the all the stuff we submitted to in these meetings was like literally ignored it was literally ignored what they did is they turned around and they created sanctions against the people buffer zones where people can't camp and where people can't stay i mean it, it's like they took the information that that was coming directly from me and another guy who are part of the homeless community they were taking this information and intentionally negating it and figuring out ways to harm the homeless. It was nuts. It's, it's like, so then they, they, they created this, 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 this um, policy, which is um, the city ordinance 12.6. So they create this policy that literally kicks all the homeless people out into the county. So it, it like pushes everybody out. You know, it's just a chain reaction. Like, you can't camp within like a hundred feet of a business entrance. Okay. Obviously most people don't do that. They don't want to do that. They don't like the traffic. You know, the homeless people don't like the traffic of people walking past, past their tents and shit. Duh. That's kind of known. No, that's come common sense. Well, uh, what about schools and daycares? Yeah. You know, a lot of some of these people, a lot of these people don't want to be waking up to kids yelling and screaming and hollering and stuff. So they stay away from daycares and same with schools. So that's a no brainer. You know, you don't have to set up policy for that kind of crazy. But then they start going into like businesses, like you, you can't camp within a hundred feet of a business. Well, that never has ever been any, that, that definition hasn't been allocated because obviously Shields, which is over here by the mall, you obviously can't pop a tent and, and make a little camp in front of Shields. But what if Shields has a, a warehouse on the north end of town and there's nothing that's on the other side of the street their business is not dictated based upon walk-in revenue that goes into their damn warehouse. So if you're camping and you got an RV or you got or you're in your car outside of that warehouse, they still classify that as a business and you can't be within 100 feet of that. So it's it's so ultimately what it does is just a chain reaction that causes people to go push everybody outside of the out into the county where there's no resources, there's no help and it costs, it's going to cost you up the ass just to live out there, just driving in and out, back and forth into town, at least for me. Um, now, one, one of the things that we had, we had talked about at those meetings was for the city to come forward with um, setting up small camps. Because the last big camp that was over there at, at um, by Walmart, right next door to Eco Compost, um, you guys can do a search on Missoula, Montana and come in on the map and, and type these things in. You can do your own searching. But ultimately, their problem, what they did with that camp is they just cluster fucked everybody together. You had people who had PTSD. You had vets. You had junkies. You had regular addicts. You had people like myself who go out and work and try to have a normal damn life. So you take all these same, all these people and you cluster fuck them together and it's not going to work. It's not, it's just not, isn't going to work. So our recommendation, me and um, uh, David's recommendation in the beginning was to create smaller camps, nothing, nothing bigger than 20 people and two people per tent. So you got a small property that would have 10 tents, two people per tent. Each person has an allocated size. You know, it's and it, it would it would be operated no different than like a school does. You're obviously not going to have um, kids with Down syndrome and retards, you know, shacking up and taking the same class that all the other regular students are taking. You have to segregate people, you know. So in like these situations where if we had these smaller camps, you're obviously not going to let junkies move in to a camp where people are, who are workers People are taxpayers who people just don't have four walls around their asses. You obviously don't want to take those kind of people, mix them in with them. That's kind of a no brainer. So you end up with this. You have to, you have to segregate. You, just, you literally do because you're, you're, you're going to get nowhere. And one of the biggest things that the city does not like, which I can kind of understand, 
You don't want to keep dumping a bunch of damn money into a bunch of people who are just nothing but black holes. You don't want to keep trying to help people, give them a house, give them medical, give them food stamps, give them all, you know, you're pumping all this assistance into these people and they have nothing to show for it. That's absolute bad parenting on, on, on every level. So the city doesn't want to do that, which is, which I can kind of understand. However, there are people out there such as myself that, you know, there's this thing in this world that you can go out and you can work, you can save up your money. And no matter how hard you try to do it, you cannot get into an apartment. It's this thing in this world that's called math. Sometimes math just doesn't work out. However, if you can personally achieve shit on your own, like what I did with having two cars and my trailer, you know, and I've got all this stuff and I build my life up so that way I don't have to ask for help. You see how that works? You achieve your own shit so you don't have to ask for help. So when you have a camp who are, have 10 people just like me, obviously there's going to be a success rate to it. It's going to be an impressive success rate. Now you're also going to have those other camps out there that are not going to be as successful. They're going to be too hooked on their drugs or they're going to be, they're going to be procrastinators and you know, they got physical problems and they got to keep making up all these damn excuses why they just can't do shit in this world, you know? So obviously you need to make sure that certain people end up in certain camps. Now, when I went out there, when I was talking to the mayor and, and city council and stuff, it seemed like everybody was on the same page. Everybody liked that idea. But for some unknown reason, come the fourth and fifth meeting that I went to, everything did a 180. And I'm pretty sure it's because they're talking to their damn attorneys, their attorneys and their um, insurance companies, because everybody, the public is too damn pussy to step up and take on liability. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Did you hear that? Yeah, that was a gunshot. I think somebody just got shot. No, no, no. I'm just joking. It's, it's July 2nd right now, and it's uh, it's 9.50 at night. So, yeah, you know, we got we got the 4th of July coming up. So you'll probably hear more of that going on. Um, but pretty much, you know, for the time being, you know, I've been out here going on five years now, and obviously I can't pull myself out. I'm working the same job, doing working with the same people, and I work two or three jobs at a time sometimes. I'll go out and I'll, I'll make contacts with people that I've already done work for through my boss and they'll have me come in and weed whack their house or or help out build a deck or or, or something you know so I'm out there trying to do something because it just gets too damn boring sitting around here all damn day I mean believe me I've done it but you know so <coughs> that's 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 kind of what I'm doing here and it's just it's it's not it's just not just me though I mean, I go down to the gas station, I see new people pulling in and you can clearly tell by looking at their car, they're sleeping in it. They got blankets and crap and all this other kind of stuff. And you see them on a regular basis. It's just not people in cars, but pickups, um, RVs, you know, you see this happening. The, the cost of living is going too high and people just can't deal with it anymore. I mean, the idea, I mean, I can tell you after COVID, the idea of the American lifestyle having a home and having two kids and a wife, that shit's over. It's over. That's not going to happen. And right now, society is slowly closing down and slowly converting over to a system where unless you were automatically wealthy and you were born into money or you win the lottery or something, then you're going to be out here with us. And those of us who are already out here are going to have one up on all those people who think that they know what it's going to be like to live out in the wilderness because I'll tell you that weekend warrior shit ain't going to survive your ass out here on the streets. You know, you're going to, you're going to need to learn how to associate with people, be nice to people and learn some very serious people skills. Cause if not, I can tell you right away, the moment I got out here, the homeless community accepted me, but there's a lot of people out here that if, that if the homeless, if the homeless community doesn't accept you, if the outside people don't accept you, they will make your life a living hell. They'll burn your car up. They'll set your tents on fire. They will do whatever they can to get your get rid of your ass. So the, the, these people do will, will will express that they don't like you and they don't dial nine one one. Yeah. So so you, you gotta you gotta ha you gotta have some seriously good character out here if you're gonna be half ha half half of anything that you want to try to be. But. So yeah, that's that's kind of like what's going on out right now. I mean, I've I've met some people who are 
trying to help me find a place, some place permanent where I can park this thing and just, you know, just kind of live like everybody else, you know, not to the point where I have to keep moving around every, every two or three weeks. It gets, to, it's, it's too much of a burden. Nobody, n nobody who was born in this world should live like that. So, you know, being forced to forced to move around and constantly be, you know, and then, then you end up being a burden to other people. You know, you don't want to do that, you know? So anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to get on out of here, you guys. And I thought I'd throw up this update, let you guys all know that I'm still alive. I'm still out here kicking. Um, I've got, gotten into advocacy, advocacy, advocacy stuff. And, you know, I'm still trying to pull my weight. It's still fucking lonely as hell out here. That's, you know, because nobody ever wants to date a homeless guy. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I'll let you guys get going and I'll see you guys later. And I'll probably do another live stream sometime, hopefully soon. Uh, what is this 20 minutes now yeah wow um just give me a heads up give me a thumbs up you guys let me know um what's 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 going on with you guys and 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 what, what's where you're living is the homeless community blowing up too is there a lot more people going on is there a lot more people becoming homeless a lot more people shacking out out in the out in the sticks let me know all right i'll see you guys later and don't forget the thumbs up and and if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe and, um, oh, I hope, ho I hope I can get back into building the go-karts and doing the whole shop thing and doing all that steel fabrication stuff again. I, I really, I would really like to do that because it's, it was what I was talented at. So, and for that talent to be wasted because this world fucked, fucked me over. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of pathetic, but anyways, guys, I'll see you guys later and I'll, I'll talk at you. Bye-bye.